Welcome to My Hometown, the program that explores clubs, organizations, businesses, and issues across Nassau and Suffolk counties and sheds light on the different towns that are making a difference. Hello and welcome to My Hometown. My name is Bill Horan, and I'm here today with my Nassau Community College student host, Corey Kaufman. And today we're shining the spotlight on a nonprofit organization that is taking the people and the community into their own hands. I have one word for you, Bill. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Again, you sound like the Islanders. Let's learn more about Yes Community Counseling Center by welcoming our guest, Jamie Bokenschutz, their executive director. Jamie, welcome to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHBC. Thank you. Now, let's start off. I knew nothing about Yes till I started talking to you a few minutes ago. So what is the message of the Yes Community Counseling Center? Well, I think probably the most important message is that Yes is a community resource, community-based resource, so located in Massapequa and Levittown. And our mission has been pretty steadfast over the years, and that's to work with children, families, adults, and parents to really provide resources to them when they're struggling in the world. (laughs) And a lot of us are struggling in the world. A lot of us are struggling, yes. Could you tell us the story of how Yes Community Counseling Center came to be? Okay. Uh, we started, well, Yes started back in the mid-70s. And the agency actually got off the ground because there were people in the community who were concerned that there were young people who were drinking and drugging. Some things don't change. Mm. And basically what happened was the uh, these parents brought their concerns to our town. And the town did a needs assessment and said, yes, you know what, there are some issues. We have kids that are in the woods that are really getting into trouble. And that kind of resulted in the Nassau County Youth Board at the time, which is now the Nassau County Office of Youth Services, saying that they had funding and that they wanted to provide seed money to make the agency an organization. And that was back in the, you know, we moved into the late 70s. And since then, we've been providing services to kids and families. And how did you get involved? I started it, yes, a long time ago. As it's, um, you don't have to age yourself. It's okay. <laughs> I started as it, as the assistant director, and basically as a social worker, I wanted to work with kids and families, and really was very attracted to the mission of the organization and its its roots in the community. And so I began there again as assistant director, and then within a year or two, I was promoted to the executive director, and I've been there ever since. Now, what actually drew you to helping the community? You're a social worker. Mm -hmm. You want to help people. But what got you into yes to say, hey, this is where I want to be and I want to stay, which you have basically that's your life's work. Yes. Yes. Well, yes, yes. yes. Good branding. Good branding. (laughs) Yes. You know, um, working in the agency began really in Massapequa. It wasn't until about 10 years ago when we were able to um, secure another location in Levittown. But growing up in the Massapequa community, the agency really demonstrated itself to be vital, vital to helping people and, and families. And being a part of that community was really just... It felt very natural and very good to be able to expand to a community that was welcoming, that was responsive, and it's been um, a pretty good love story over the years. You know, the community is very responsive to the work that we do. They're they're open to to looking at things. They're open to looking at issues, and and the same can be said about, you know, our move into the Levittown community. It's just, it's been, while certainly the work is at sometimes very, very challenging and, and difficult, it's been very rewarding in terms of being able to just respond to what's happening for our neighbors. You've been expanding? We have been expanding. Uh, we started, you know, with about six people back in the late 70s. We now have over 50 staff. We have lots of different kinds of programs. This past year, we were able to secure two federal grants, which allowed us to really work on some of the community coalitions that we've been uh, a part of for the past few years. So the agency has grown a lot. And again, it's really based upon the issues that keep emerging in the community. How many locations do you have? We have the two. Uh, Just the two? We have the two, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. And where are they? One is Massapequa, uh, mm-hmm. right off of um, Sunrise Highway. And the second is in Levittown, a little bit short of uh, Hempstead Turnpike. <laughs> and anybody's welcome to come here. You don't have to be from Massapequa or Levittown, right? 
Depends. On, it depends. And, and the reason I say it depends is that when we're at capacity, we have to be a little bit more restrictive in terms of who we can see. But when we're not at capacity, um, we are able, and through our drug treatment program, our outpatient drug treatment program, we're able to see anyone from any community because we often see that sometimes people want to be in an agency or get help outside of their community. Now, Jamie, in your title, it's your organization is named Yes Community Counseling Center. It's all about community. What exactly do you do? We were talking about this before the mm-hmm. show, and I'm sure some people listening say, gee, that's good, but I, I wonder, does that apply to me? Or, oh, my gosh, I didn't know they did that, or they help people in these situations. So can you give us the overview? Sure. You know, the agency really does provide a lot of comprehensive services, and they look like individual family group counseling around issues if um, people affected by child abuse, by domestic violence, people who are struggling with substance use disorders, alcoholism, drug addiction, uh, folk who may be, you know, children who may be struggling in schools around socialization, around bullying, lots of kids who come in because their families are struggling around divorce, around death, loss. We do a lot of work around suicide prevention. We do a lot of work around child abuse prevention, a lot of training with our colleagues. Um, we do a lot of teacher training. We go into a lot of school districts and provide training to them as well. We do a lot of coalition work where we're really working with community stakeholders, people who are invested in the community around the opioid epidemic. So we've been doing a lot of work around that. We have a food pantry. We have... Um, Lots of different resources, a program called Commerce Plaza, where we work with children throughout Long Island around financial literacy. And that's pretty unique and special to Long Island. I really never would have thought of half of those things. Mm -hmm. And as you were talking, I'm thinking, sometimes there's probably someone, and it's sad, even if they're in a large family or uh, circumstances where you think, oh, they're around people every day, but maybe they can't talk to those people. Sure. It's not real communication. Yes, open the door, or Jane's here for her appointment, or did you get that last order? But it's not fulfilling communication sure. that they may need for a family problem, and we all have them. I don't care as famous as people may look or be or are. Absolutely. We all have these, and we need your services. Mm-hmm. So thanks for being there for everybody, Thank first you. off, and uh, for all that you do for the people. Uh, what, so what are the, the problems? Do the problems lean more on family or substance abuse or something different? Is, what's the case, what are the, like, the majority of the cases that you're facing? That's a good question. You know, most times when people walk through the doors, they're coming in with something that looks like the symptom, you know, the, the child who's failing in class or, or, or getting in trouble um, with the police. And oftentimes what we find is that it's usually a symptom of something a little bit bigger. So, you know, the family work, the individual work is really geared to kind of peel back some of those layers and see, like, what's really going on here. And oftentimes it's a family that's really in distress, you know, parents who are warring with one another and kids are stuck in the middle. Um, and so it's really, you know, the work is really all about trying to, to get to the bottom of what's what's really happening. You know, for many of our kids and families that come in, even those who are struggling with addiction, substance use disorder issues, uh, oftentimes when we look back, we see that there's a lot of trauma in people's lives. And because it hasn't been resolved in a healthy way, it kind of morphs itself into unhealthy coping. Just the range of people coming into you, and maybe you can do it by an anecdote mm-hmm. or without, obviously, names. And you've been there a long time, so you can pick one. Uh, is it just a sporadic one? A person comes, 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 or does it seem to be the same person who has 18 problems with their family? And maybe they do just have a difficult, you know, some of us are blessed with wonderful families. We don't even appreciate it because you see the problem family that may have drugs, alcohol, abuse, uh, broken marriages, uh, family Mm -hmm. discord, etc. So can you fill us in on kind of uh, maybe a typical client? That comes well, you in? know, most of the people that walk through the doors when they when they when they come into the agency and they're presenting with some kind of issue, you know, the hope is that we're going to be able to fa- provide counseling for them that is going to help look at some of those issues. And most times that counseling lasts for, you know, a period of time, sometimes over a year. Um, and the hope is, the goal is that after that, you know, that time, that they're going to learn skills to cope better, to understand more, and to make better and healthier decisions so that when they walk out the door, they don't walk back. But that said, there are lots of people, you know, who along the way, they do check back with us. You know, the kid who came, I can't tell you how many kids who have come to us when they've been 15, 16, 18, and then they come back to us when they're 38 because now they have kids of their own and they're struggling with the same kinds of issues. Um, and so we do have people that come back through the doors, but 
you know, again, our goal is always to make sure that they walk out a lot healthier than they walked in. Uh, I'm just thinking as opposed to a restaurant or any other <laughs> business, a sign on your door. Our goal is that you don't come back. Absolutely. And and obviously that would it has a different meaning and I'm yes. not being uh please uh, don't too, come again. <laughs> yeah, but, but if you've We'd succeeded you. and like a good doctor, if you've succeeded, yes. they don't have to yeah. come back for a while yes. and that's a very good thing. Yes. So if you are listening to my hometown on the voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. My name is Corey Kaufman, along with Bill Horan, and today we're talking with Jamie Bogenschutz, executive director of the Yes Community Counseling Center with offices in Levittown and Massapequa, right here on Long Island. Jamie, uh, something I'd just like to insert that you said before, and I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to forget it. You mentioned about teachers, mm-hmm. and we have a lot of students. We're here on a college campus at Nassau Community who want to go on to be teachers, or may find that later on in their career that teaching is their calling, they've taken a few other jobs, and this is what they're looking for. Would you recommend or suggest, and I know you'd like to get as many people in as you can, but it did seem to me that for a teacher to have this experience and to do some type of meaningful work with you, you know, not just sharpening the pencils, et cetera, but to see some of the cases that come in so they realize that student who isn't doing well might have a variety Mm -hmm. of family problems behind them. Is that something that would help, or am I going on the wrong track? You're not going on the wrong track, but maybe just a little bit of a side path. Okay. You know, most of the work that we do with our teachers is is within the school districts, where we do a lot mm-hmm. of faculty training on those kinds of issues that you identified. You know, so we'll go out and we'll teach tra- we'll teach teachers to look at signs and symptoms and warning signs and what they can do so that kids don't fall through the cracks, so that they're better prepared in their classrooms to identify issues. Because we know that when we talk about prevention work, it's all about finding kids when they're young. You know, seeing those those cracks when they're when they're in you know first grade, kindergarten, second grade, so that we don't have to send kids on a path that's not so healthy. Um, you know, the staff that work at Yes, they're all really licensed, credentialed, either mental health counselors, social workers, or marriage and family counselors. So we don't necessarily have teachers working with us. The place where sometimes we have teachers being a part of our program is through our Commerce Plaza program, where kids are learning how. Uh, how to negotiate the business world with financial literacy. And say that again, because you went quickly through it. it what is it called? Commerce? Commerce Plaza. Commerce Plaza. Is mm-hmm. that a, a, actually a location, or is it just a it's, cute name? It's one of our programs, mm-hmm. and it's located at, at our Levittown facility in about 1,500 square feet, and it's about 11 simulated businesses that look like the uh, microcosm of what the business world would look like, and kids come there on a field trip after they've prepared in their home schools, and they learn about the world of work. So there are kids there that during their visitation, they become bankers and lawyers and um, managers and health professionals and laboratory assistants. So it's really. I want to go, and I'm an old guy. You should come, come and visit. Like you, Disneyland. Could, you should come. Yeah. It's, a, it's an extraordinary uh, experience for fifth graders. Yeah. And is that the level that fifth grade? Uh, just mm-hmm. fifth grade. Yep. I if I make it to sixth grade, I'm out. So I'm <laughs> past there. Fifth you grade. Take me? Well, we take fifth graders because it's the easy for the school districts because uh-huh. of all their testing requirements. Mm-hmm. Fifth grade is really like the, the the best the best time to get them in, and they're so so viable and and moldable and so eager to learn. It's really it's really a wonderful wonderful magic. I, I think that's great because sometimes what the school misses most, they do wonderful jobs. I think of teaching the basics, what they're told to do. But sometimes it's the real world situation, how to fix your car, how to Mm -hmm. fix a tire Mm -hmm. that falls off, how to balance your checkbook. And that's what we're missing. And for them to experience in this, and I'm sure somebody who goes in there goes through the little town that you have set up and says, I want to be a pharmacist. I want to be an accountant, a nurse, a doctor. And she wants to be that doctor and she's going to be that doctor. Because you started a role. Absolutely. So. And Capital One Bank would be very, very happy to hear because that's what they do. You know, there's a big, we have a bank set up there and these kids are Any writing money checks, for ATM. Those of us who come in? It's special Commerce Plaza money. Special Commerce Plaza money. I wanted the real stuff. Okay, Corey. We'll, we'll have to go with special Commerce Plaza We have not Plaza learned money. how to make the real stuff. Yet. Okay. <laughs> but it's, pre- it's pretty genius, too, because kids love to play pretend. So if they're learning valuable skills. They love it, and yeah. they really do walk out with a better understanding of, of how to negotiate some of the business world. It's, it's really a wonderful world. That part wonderful has world. me hooked now already. That, that's where I'm focused. come down and visit. I, I want to. I'm going to get more details. In fact, I have your brochure right here. While we're at that point, tell our audience, if you mentioned the towns, Levittown, Massapequa. Yes. 
if they want to get in touch or if they just want to know more, can you give us some background, whether it's a website, phone number? Can they Combination of all. Okay. You know, certainly the easiest thing is if they want to give us a phone call at 516-799-3203, and that's our main number. Um, and then emailing is, is, is also simple at info at yesccc.org. We have a FaceTime, you know, a FaceTime. We have a Facebook presence, so people can look at us that way. Our website is yes ccc.org and we're always you know trying to get information up to the community so that's another good way to just find out what we're up to and of course to our audience we will give that information before the end of the show again so if you want to get it down or if you didn't and they're easy branding i think it's yes what did you say yes ccc.org yeah be much easier and um we'll pass that out to everyone so you have it and just to have it on the side there may be a co-worker or someone when you're talking about this and say how do i get in touch with them Mm -hmm. you may want to jot this down Corey, did you have a question? What's the what's the times that the phone lines are open? We're open. We we open up by usually about eight thirty, sometimes a little bit earlier in the morning. Uh, in the morning, we're okay. open every night until nine thirty, with the exception of Friday. We are not open on the weekends, at least not now. Um, but uh, you know, we try to make sure that we're as accessible as we can be when we're not open. We do have our backup twenty four hour hotline through Long Island Crisis Counseling Center, so there's twenty four seven available. Ability if somebody really needs to speak to someone in the wee hours of the morning and we're not there, there's a, there's backup resources for help. Well, there and, you go. Corey, before the show, Jamie was telling me that, and I think it's okay to say this, that uh, money should never be an issue, that Correct. someone shouldn't say, oh, I need help, but I know I couldn't afford them Correct. because – you guys are professionals. You've been doing it a number of years. Yes. They're going to be expensive, and they're like lawyers and doctors. They can't pay it, and it's not covered by – tell us where that fits in for people. As an organization that's funded through the state and the county and the towns, you know, we are, are – we're very, very um, committed to maintaining the position that no one, no one is ever denied services based upon an inability to pay. If someone has um, in their insurance, we will, you know, we certainly will, will do our best to submit for insurance. But the bottom line is regardless of need, no one is, is denied services. And the beauty of being part of those systems is that there are other agencies like us in communities all throughout Nassau County. So there's no reason in today's times that someone who might be suffering with any issues, that they should not be able to access services. Sometimes it's very complicated. And that's mm-hmm. another nice thing about being a part of a system for a really long time is that we can often help people negotiate some of the bureaucracies. And I think that's the sign or the um, saying we would like everybody to say here. No one will be denied services because yeah. of inability. Because, again, you and I were talking, and sometimes there's that older neighbor <clears throat> excuse me, who might be mm-hmm. alone. They're not doing anything wrong. Everything looks fine, but maybe they forget to shut off the stove at night. And maybe the candle is left burning. Sure. Uh, maybe they're just lonely. Might be a chance for them to come in and talk, and maybe you can direct them even to a, right. an organization, a senior group, or just find out if there's a real problem, or just uh, you know, mm-hmm. oh, my sister died and I haven't made new friends or something. Right. So uh, for our audience to be aware, it's called Yes Community Counseling Center. It's in Levittown, Massapequa. We'll give you the website and all that later on again. But uh, you may want to jot it down that if a neighbor, friend, or even someone in your family needs some help, a coworker. You can be the one to provide it and make you feel really good and Jamie feels good helping people. (laughs) Corey? Why do you think some of these communities are missing these resources and the government really isn't helping these people? Well, honestly, you know, um, given the the, um, financial economic times that we live in, it, it becomes harder and harder for nonprofit community based agencies like ours to, to thrive, to grow uh, because of finances. And I think economics often becomes, you know, the pivotal deciding factor for, for, for many in government. And so it's a constant struggle for myself and my colleagues who are part of the Youth Services Coalition, the Drug Treatment Coalition. It's a constant struggle to help our legislators understand how vital and how important it is for people to have resources in their community. So every year we fight. Uh, that hasn't changed over the years. You know, we have not seen real increases to our budgets, which obviously allow us to hire staff to do all that's needed to do. But, you know, that said, we, we, we have survived and we have maintained our funding and that's a good thing. And so there is some recognition, you know, on the part of our elected officials that what we do is important and that, you know, that they can maintain that funding for us because we are. We, what we do is really critical. 
and hopefully the show will help. You're listening to My Hometown on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Corey Kaufman, along with Bill Haran. And today, we're talking with Jamie Bogenschutz, Executive Director of the Yes Community Counseling Center with offices in Levittown and Massapequa, right here on Long Island. Jamie, um, in your mission statement, you say you want to increase awareness about personal and community issues. I, to be honest, I never heard of Yes before Mm -hmm. this. So how do you get the word out there so that people know about it and those few people who might be left who do not listen to my hometown (laughs) and are not listening to today's show, how would they find out about Yes and know that that's available to them? Most of the outreach that we make within the community is is fairly um, confined to the community. So if you're living in an area outside of, you know, South Shore, Massapequa or South Shore, I'm sorry, South Shore, Nassau County or even Central Nassau County, you might not be aware of our services. Um, and that's okay because there are other services within those communities that can respond to that. For those who are living in our community, you know, they learn about us through their schools, through through their physicians, through their, you know, their, you know, their pediatricians, through their social workers that are in the school-based system, uh, through word of mouth, through the PTAs, because they're all partners with us, through the Chamber of Commerce, all, you know, again, all those people who become stakeholders in the community, who want to see the, the community healthy and sound, uh, they they know who we are because we're we're out and about in the community all the time trying to get the word out about you know different issues obviously when the opioid epidemic really became very very prevalent you know our community was you know on the headlines all the time mm-hmm. and so you know our work to to intervene and to reduce some of those death rates uh, became very very important so we were out and about on you know through you know newspapers social media as, as much as we could to spread the word now I'm just going to give you a scenario um, take me an average neighbor who goes about their business every day, but I see Freddie down the block, and he's a high school student. I see something going on with him, just is sitting on the curb at night. He's, in my opinion, and of course I'm making this up, mm-hmm. he's either on drugs or something happened to alcohol and that. Do I call you? Do I call the school and say, maybe you should look into his personal life? It seems to be going awry. Do I call you or, uh, you know, as a neighbor? Or does it have to be his mom or dad or brother or sister? I would tell you that chances are if you called, um, you know, if you called us as a neighbor, we we probably would have to, you know, we'd have to speak to, to Freddie or Freddie's mom or dad, mm-hmm. depending upon, you know, what's going on with Freddie. And certainly, you know, as a neighbor, we would encourage you to take some action. If it was dangerous, if you, you know, if Freddie was, was on the side and it looked like he was overdosing, we would certainly, first response is obviously to call 911 and call mm-hmm. the police and have them intervene. Um, calling the school might be hard because, you know, when people call in and you don't have have a lot of information. It's hard, you know, they're not detectives. Um, probably best response would be knocking on Freddie's door and saying to mom or dad, I'm worried about your son. You might get a good response. You might not get a good response. Right. And certainly if Freddie is under the age of 18 and you're concerned that Freddie's not getting the care that he needs and you've spoken to mom and dad and they refuse to get Freddie the care that he needs, right. then um, child you know, Child Protective Services is the next response. That and honestly, place. that's good because I, I really wouldn't know and now that I'm thinking of it. I made up the problem just to mm-hmm. hel- help our audience, but I, I wouldn't know where to go for it. Look at that poor guy down the block or look at that bum. And I'm not helping him by right. saying that. Correct. I obviously want to know what we could do to help and, yeah. and make the conditions a little yeah, better. Yeah, we live so. in a really scary world, and sometimes people are afraid to reach out and to, you know, and to, to provide resources and help and support. And that's why, you know, having neighbors that are not afraid to speak up or, and, and people who are looking out for everybody else is so, so vital these days. Since we're all worried about the drug crisis, is there anything that you can tell us that you're doing special or a new movement or program? that we should be aware of? Well, we have, you know, two newly funded, um, actually three newly funded grants from the federal government to help us, you know, build coalitions to really provide some evidence-based approaches to dealing with this issue. But if I could really do it in a nutshell, it's all about, you know, loving your kids and, and not closing your eyes to what's right in front of you. And if you're not sure and if you're afraid, follow your instincts and reach out and get some help. Because all too often, you know, it's not like a kid opens their eyes at 18 and, and they're a drug addict. Um, you know, it's when they're 7 and 8 and they're stuck and they're afraid and they're alone and they're feeling bullied or picked on or isolated from the world that they start disconnecting a little bit. And it's it's that's when we have to keep our eyes wide open and, and get kids and get parents to just understand more and love better and, and, and know more. 
and I, th- I think that in itself is very helpful and just to make people aware of it, that it's not uh, mean people saying this. It's loving people who want to help you Absolutely. and get you over that hurdle. Mm-hmm. But any, like, specific programs? Like, are you in schools talking to, like, the kids about, like, hey, if somebody offers you drugs, like, yes. don't do it. Just say no, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Well, it's, uh, you, yeah, and you know. It's not as simple <laughs> as just say no. Um, but we do, we offer a lot of different kinds of programs. And one of them is a program that really teaches kids from a very young age how to feel better about being in their own skin. Mm-hmm. So that when life gets crazy and complicated and stressful and scary, that instead of making a choice to try this to make it feel better, they maybe turn to someone to say, I'm in trouble. So, yeah, lots of programs in the schools, working with the social workers in the schools, the social workers who are doing the programs, working with teachers, educators, administrators to help them just get a really better understanding as to what this whole epidemic is all about. And Jamie, what about some of the programs we think of the people on the extremes, a drug or criminal, something that Mm -hmm. may be out there and and fearful to us in some degree, but inside family issues, what are some of the things with families that you work with? Many of the families that walk through the doors are families who are struggling with young people who are using drugs. Um, Many of the families who walk through the doors are also struggling with issues related to divorce or death or loss, suicide, depression, anxiety. So because of that, we run a lot of different kinds of groups that that respond to those issues. So issues, um, you know, groups for kids and for adults so that, you know, nobody falls through the cracks. That's what we want. Great. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? What like what's the process if someone doesn't exactly know that they have an issue with substance or like a family issue? Um, is there some sort of intervention service? Honestly, you know what I would probably encourage people to do is that if you're not sure, but but something just doesn't feel right in your gut, call. Just reach out, call, um, and we can guide someone through the steps as to, you know, how to get through the doors, how to help someone who maybe doesn't want to come through the doors, come through the doors. Um, and if we're not, and I, and I don't mean to suggest that, that yes is the answer for everything, because it's not, you know, but because we've been in the community for such a long time, we have tentacles in lots of good places. And so if we're not the best or the right place to be, then the work of our staff is to really get people to where they need to be to get the best help that they can get. And when they walk into, like, when they walk through the doors and they're like, I need help, what are mm-hmm. you doing? Like, how are they helping? How they're, are you helping them? A, a social worker or a licensed ma- marriage and family therapist or a mental health counselor would sit down with them and really just, again, you know, before I talked about peeling back the layers, just getting mm-hmm. a better sense as to who they are, what they need, and how we can best help. And then to direct them into those services as best as we can. Jamie, this is a perfect uh, opportunity. Give us the key information to get in touch with Yes, where you're located. Sure. On the website, give our audience. So we're located on 75 Grand Avenue in Massapequa and 152 Center Lane in Levittown. Our phone number is 516-799-3203. 516-799-3203. And our email is info at yesccc.org or our website is yesccc.org. We want to thank our guest, Jamie Bogenschutz, the Executive Director of the Yes Community Counseling Center, for being with us today. Jamie, thank you so much for the information you've given us. I'd like our audience to know that I'm Bill Horan. I'm here with Corey Kaufman. We thank you for listening to this week's edition of My Hometown. We'd like to get your feedback on My Hometown. Send your comments to whpc at ncc.edu. Nassau Community College, where success starts and continues. Till next time, this is Bill St. James. And remember, there's no town like your hometown.